Good morning, afternoon and night to who might be watching this video. My name is Rafael Bezerra and I welcome you to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about the film Black Christmas from 1974, directed by Bob Clark. This movie can count as an special one to watch not only Halloween but also, surprisingly enough, in Christmas. The Canadian production was one of those cases where a low-budget film gets a lot of attention at the time. Unfortunately, along the years, the film fell into forgetfulness, in part due to the obscurity caused by other immensely bigger projects that would dominate the terror genre in the 80s. But as I am intending to show you, this is an overlooked masterpiece, and in fact this is so unfair because of how much influence Black Christmas had and still has on the genre. Actually, this very same influence turns out to just complicate the talk about this film, because some conventions that may appear cliché nowadays were first introduced here, and simply overused over and over again ever since. It might be impossible to not relate everything that came after, as much as it might be to not relate Black Christmas to a masterpiece from the previous year, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which in its turn had a strong inspiration on this one. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre was a groundbreaking achievement in filmmaking, in a time when more independent filmmakers were being highlighted in Hollywood. This picture managed to have an enormous impact with an extremely low budget, showing how much we could experiment in a many times underrated genre by just having control of the cinematic experience. While the Texas Chainsaw Massacre may have had a huge influence on the genre as a whole, Black Christmas can be seen as a much more concise derivation in which, by its turn, would help to create a subgenre, the slashers. Black Christmas is basically the first and perhaps even the last step of it at the same time. In the story, we follow a group of students that live together in a sorority house. During the Christmas break, they are reunited to celebrate their usual party on Christmas Eve. At times, they receive disturbing phone calls that at first appears to be just a prank. Everything would be going just fine, but there is one thing which risking this and give an unexpectedly creepiness to those festivities. It's actually the very first sequence of the film, without any announcement or even prepare the public for it. Right after the initial credits, we get straight away a POV shot, a point of view of someone from outside the house looking at it. Apparently, it is a man with half breathing and who seems to be a stranger to that environment. But he enters the loft. And the film just continues. So, since the beginning we have the information that an unknown man is inside the house, it is extremely uneasy. The director offers a much more intimate approach on the girls, whose characters actually feel like real people and not only free victims for the killer, making us care for them. In the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the cinematography feels almost as if it excelling a palpable ugliness of the spaces, Obviously here we have a much more common scenario, a normal house, but that feels claustrophobic when we don't know where the madman might be next. Even the Christmas red lights also seem to kind of push the boundaries of the house. All of the traditional elements of the holiday are very well established, it is not a story which happens during Christmas randomly, people are generally unprepared and with low guarded festivities. Violent killings are intercut with children singing carol songs. In fact, the only true moment when there is a character who is conscious of that threat is only near the end. Black Christmas can be considered a pretty bold and mature film for the time. The 70s was still under the influence of counterculture movement of the 60s and often avoided topics such as sexuality and even abortion as simply display here. In one particular scene, the most irresponsible character, Barbara, even offers some drink to a kid, which was something unimaginable back there. In fact, even the capability of the police to solve a crime is put at stake, the competence of some of them is shown as a barrier, the presence of the police established pretty much as a supporting, different from other films in which they would receive the main focus, but here there is nothing to investigate that the audience doesn't already know. Actually, the cliche of the police rushing to the house on the last minute is just one among many others. The creep phone call would be overused as much as when just one girl survives at the end. And the opening from the 77 Halloween is pretty much identical to this one from Black Christmas. But and what about the good ideas that for some unexplicable reason were just ignored? I guess that almost all of them turns around the mysterious villain Billy, who is a great one. 
Taking influence from the cannibal family from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, he is openly mind defective and what is more disturbing is his incomprehensible behavior and obsession toward those people. Verging on experimentation at times, his physique is displayed as something which we know factually little. You can almost feel that it was just a matter of chance that that guy decided to enter that specific house, adding a sense of realism, because you never think that something might happen specifically with you, until it does. Watching that final confrontation scene, I wonder why people keep insisting on that slow walking of the antagonist toward a running survivor. I mean, it works at times, but an image from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre which stick on my mind is that clumsy little run from Leatherface while he is screaming and so on. That's terrifying, mainly because in real life not everyone is on one leg perhaps. The lack of clarity on who Billy actually is, always covered with shadows or appearing before the POV shot, gives him kind of a creature aura and the film even creates an ambiguity on his identity, which brilliantly conveys to that ending that we will last a long time on our minds. Those were my thoughts on Black Christmas, I hope you enjoyed. Remember to subscribe and to check my letterbox page in the description. See you in my next video.